It is time again for our Reporters Rewind, our chance to invite journalists to the roundtable to discuss this week's headlines. Our guests today include our beloved guest host, journalist <laughs> Julian Phillips. He's a little shy, too. Won't have much right. to say. Uh, <laughs> plus Josh Barker, reporter for the New York Amsterdam News and freelance journalist Bob Meadows, whose career has included stints at People and Essence magazines. Welcome, gentlemen. Are you ready? Yes. Oh, this, this is what I like to say. Start your engine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, let's start, first of all, there's, there's actually a lot of news about Russia yeah. uh, this week, but let's start with the spy scaper. Yeah. Well, let me just say, I, it, when, I was, when I found out I was doing this interview, one of the things I said was that we've seen all these Russian spy movies about, it took me back there. Literally took me back to that time when we are having these spies in Russia and these movies and all the, that kind of stuff. But I think what's interesting is that we have spies going on here in our country mm -hmm. domestically. We had Muslims being spied on for a very long time here in New York City and in New Jersey. And so when we have those spies, you know, in Russia, it's like, what's going on? And I think people want answers. I felt like I was reading a spoof of a John le Carre novel, actually. <laughs> because you have this guy, he's arrested. It seems like bad spy training to me. He's right. carrying a wig. And he's a got bad a bad wig. Right, a bad I know wig. places where he can yeah. get a much better wig. <laughs> <laughs> made up on 125th Street. I'm still saying the same Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. But it, it seemed like, it, it also made me wonder, OK, he's out of their country. Who, who did we trade? For him, mm -hmm. who's out of our country yeah. now? Because mm -hmm. this spy yeah. spy trading is something that's gone on for a very long, long time, time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and it made me wonder. All right, so what are they getting in return? Mm -hmm. But the implications, though, are mm -hmm. certainly much greater. We may laugh and joke about his terrible wig, but the reality is, this puts already fragile relations with Russia in a more tenuous situation. Well, the thing about it is I think that both countries are downplaying this uh, and, and not really detailing the, the seriousness of, of the situation, if it is in fact that. You, know, you, you look at this new series on, I don't know if you've seen it, called The Americans, uh, yeah. and, and it kind of chronicles what we're dealing with in this country, what we dealt with back then. And, and the issue is, I think people need to understand that you know there are still a lot of things that both countries want to get from each other. The spy game is still very, very big in this world, mm -hmm. and I think this is certainly an indicative of that. You know, I also, I don't really think they're downplaying this, because normally yeah. these things are handed, pr handled pretty quietly. Right. But I know that Putin has gone, come against the United States saying mm -hmm. we're meddling. He mm -hmm. wants to make this a big deal mm -hmm. and show, hey, this is what I do. You know, this is how I roll, and, right. and so you don't you don't mess with me because this is what I'm doing. He wants his people to know that too, and so it's, it makes you wonder why is this so public? Yeah, yeah and I wonder point. if the, and this might be an overreach, and I fully uh, acknowledge that. But I wonder if this in some way uh, starts again some form of the old Cold War. You know, I was. I, I thought that as well, and I think that people are looking for answers right now. People want to know why this happened, why are we still doing this? This is something that happened a long time ago, and yes, it does bring up issues about the Cold War. Are we starting that again? Well, I think that people just want answers as well, to why I, it happened. There, there, there are a lot of things going on. If you just look at the Mideast and what's going on over there in Syria, we're on the opposite side mm -hmm. of where Russia is. They still right. have those mm -hmm. deep water ports over there. I'm sure there's intelligence that we would like to gather from them. I think there's still mistrust between Russia and the United States, especially exactly. with Putin and his background with the KGB. Absolutely. So, you know, you're going to find uh, situations like this, but, you know, a guy with a wig, I mean, you know, that's just, I don't know. Yeah, and then just, you <laughs> and know, just news in, in this last 24-hour yeah, right. news cycle, we find out that Russia has supplied uh, the Assad regime in Syria with these advanced missiles. Right. You mm -hmm. know, after a meeting with Kerry just a few days ago saying mm -hmm. we're going to have this peace summit mm -hmm. next month to talk about ways to, uh, to stabilize Syria. So, you know, there are some very serious implications Yeah, here. not just there around the world. I mean, you know, our interests are, are not the same. Right. It yeah. Is. Yeah, indeed. All right. Well, let's move on to, to another uh, um, intriguing situation, but it's scandal right here on our shores, and that mm -hmm. is this IRS mm -hmm. uh, yeah. scandal. <laughs> um, golly, this could, have not, could not have come at a worse time for President Obama. No. Any time this came would have been the worst time. <laughs> yeah. Obama, You're right. Sure. If, if this had happened in October of last year, that would have been a much worse time for President Obama because you have the people on the right. You have these conservatives. You have the Tea Party groups saying, you know, the government's after us. Mm -hmm. And, oh, actually they are mm -hmm. after you. It actually feeds into all their conspiracy theories. Every, every paranoia that they have, right, right, right. just because I'm paranoid doesn't mean it's not true. Well, I kind of think yeah. that um, as Americans, we, we do have a right to be able to speak freely and say what we have to say. And of course, we all know the Tea Party has their views and opinions on the president and how government is ran. They have that right. They have that right. But they don't have the right to have the IRS after them. Because I know if it was me or it was another group or another uh, uh, subgroup, it would be a big issue for anybody. If the IRS had said we were following 50 million black people, 
over the course of a certain amount of time, it would be a problem. It should be a problem for anybody. And if who's the IRS to say that they have This is not really new. Exactly, I mean, it's no, not new. No, no, no. You go back to uh, uh, Hoover and the FBI, mm -hmm. and, and you know, and, and Kennedy not being able to find out certain information. I think the difference here is, is we have a 24-hour news cycle, mm -hmm. and I think that that's, it's a game changer for anything. And you know, you, you find certain conservatives now are saying, "Hey, look, you know, this is criminal." Uh, and they are talking about the big I word, the impeachment word. Yeah. I mean, yeah. is that possible? I, I, I don't know. Because what, what you have in this case, you can't really trace any of this to any official so far mm -hmm. in the White House. If that happens, and then we're talking about it. And isn't that part of the problem, change. too? Obama's kind of handling of it, the, the fact that he yeah. said, well, I found out about it when I saw it on, on the media, this kind of aloofness. Doesn't that also feed into the issue surrounding it? The scandal itself, the investigation itself is bad enough, but also just the kind of hands-off, I didn't know what was going on. Well, what, what happened, what I, what I think here, guys, you may feel different about this, I think mm -hmm. the issue is Obama, because, you know, behind the scenes, I worked two years on Capitol Hill. There's a disconnect, I've used that word a lot in, in the last hour, uh, between Obama uh, and uh, lawmakers on Capitol Hill. And here is another example that people could point to that say, hey, look, this guy, you know, is not in touch. You know, now how true that is? Mm -hmm. well, but, but there's a couple of other things, though, here. First of all, you know, I think that the IRS does have to do its due diligence in right. investigating the activities of groups who want this protection, and that's what the 501c4 mm -hmm. is. Right. It's a protection against things. Right. Uh, and so, you know, now the scandal has hamstrung a legitimate policy uh, mm -hmm. for, with, for that it really is there for legitimate purposes, but there's also a double standard here. Mm -hmm. uh, because you might remember that um, when, in the Bush era that the IRS Question the status of the NAACP. Do you right. all remember I, that? I remember that, right. Yeah. Yeah. Was, was there any inquiries about impeachment back then? <laughs> no, there were not. Not that I can remember. <laughs> Probably I remember uh, that not necessarily well, on yeah. that specific issue. Right. There are yeah. plenty issue. of inquiries of <laughs> impeachment for George Bush. But I think that, what, I think that <laughs> playing into what was said over here, I think that it was, it's such an issue when you have any group that is investigated by the government, such as the Tea Party with their views yeah. going as extreme as they are. And everybody knows how we all feel about the Tea Party. There's a mixed emotion. I mean, it's something new that people are still trying to get adjusted to mm -hmm. in this new America. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that's now in the new America since President Obama has been elected. So I think that groups like that should be watched, but only within the limits of our constitutional rights. Yeah, and I think if anything, they just went at it the wrong, right? Went by it the wrong yeah. way, did the right. right thing the wrong way. And that perhaps. may hurt them. I, I think that ultimately may, may hurt the Obama administration. All right, there's there's not going to be any arguing on this next topic. <laughs> I think we're all on the same page, and that of course <laughs> is the uh, DOJ subpoena of uh, phone records from the Associated Press yeah. without first uh, <laughs> notifying them. Well, we all have friends. I know all of us at this table probably have a friend or one friend, or maybe even worked at the Associated Press at one point mm -hmm. in time. Mm -hmm. And when we found out about this, we're like, what is going on? Right. I know for me, I came very close to working for the AP years and years and years ago, but I decided not to. But I have friends here in New York City who work there who were very shocked that this happened. And I think as journalists, we all know, a lot of us went to J school, some of us majored in other things. Mm. One of the things we learned is that we have a right to our personal privacy in terms of our work and our integrity, um, and that we shouldn't be observed by government and we're having our phone tap, phones tapped and things like that. It's so serious. It right. smacks of intimidation. Yes, yes. That's what it smacks of. The Department of Justice did this because there was a leak on a story involving Al Qaeda with the AP and, and the several other news organizations. So that's what they, they they then subpoenaed all these records without letting anybody know. Completely smacks of, of of intimidation, trying to stop the press. Obama yesterday said no apologies for mm -hmm, what they right. did because of you know various reasons. But it, it it's another one. It's just another layer. But what were they thinking? Yeah. What were they thinking? <clears throat> there are legitimate ways that you can get this information. Right. Once, of course, you can su subpoena this information. Uh, you know, one that's not popular with liberals uh, is the Patriot Act. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, guys. You, you know people, you're, you're under a hot light, you're under scrutiny, you know, certainly from the right. If you were to have done this the right way, would we, would we be talking about this mm -hmm. right now? That, that's well, I think question. that's the key, is that it wasn't done the right way. Yeah, and that's where the insult is for, for the journalism profession. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and also, but it raises bigger issues just for uh, private, private citizens at large. Yeah. Private right. citizens at large. And also, what do we have as journalists to be able to call our own and to be able to do without having government watching us? That's so important. I would be very upset if I went to a protest rally for a stop and frisk or any other issue that I cover in the Amsterdam News, and a police officer told me, hand me your notepad, let me see what you're writing. I have a problem with that. I don't know about you, but I certainly would. I would have a big sure. problem with that. <laughs> That's what happened. But well, you'd have to turn it over, at least given this case. Right, probably so. Yeah. And as you say, it's in, what about private citizens? It's just another 
thing that feeds into everything that the right has been saying mm -hmm. about this administration. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's raised an outcry, and rightfully so. Certainly has. Gentlemen, we're going to have to start it, and lady. We're going to have to stop it right here. But Josh Barker, thank you so much. Right, no Bob Meadows, good to see you. I want you, you guys too. to come back. Will Definitely you do will. that? <laughs> All right, and uh, thanks to you, Julian, as thank you. always. Thank you. And you're watching Arise America. Thank you.